Welcome once again guys, my name is Sari and this time we are going to look at another common classification of fractures and this time we are focusing on the proximal humerus. You probably know it's a Nias classification, right? This classification was described by Dr. Charles Nia in 1970. He believed that the existing classifications were inadequate for research purposes as they did not differentiate between injuries of varied severity. Now, did they group like fractures? The classification that time were based on the mechanism of injury or level of fracture line, but did not consider many important surgical aspects or pathological features of injury, such as uh, tuberosity displacement. Nia was also a pioneer in shoulder arthroplasty and developed the first practical and widely used prosthesis for shoulder. He was a founding member and the first president of the American Shoulder and Elbow Surgeons in 1982 and served on the American Board of uh, Orthopedic Surgery, the Board of uh, Trustees of the Shoulder and Elbow Surgery, and the International Board of uh, Shoulder and Elbow Surgery. We can see that uh, he had a big impact in the field of orthopedic surgery, right? To understand this classification better, let's look at uh, anatomy of the humerus and areas around the shoulder. The shoulder complex is composed of the clavicle, scapula, and humerus, with the scapula and clavicle making the shoulder giddle or pectoral giddle. It is intricately designed combination of four joints, the glenohumeral, acromioclavicular, sternoclavicular, and the floating joint known as the scapulothoracic joint. How many interest will be the glenohumeral and uh, the humerus? Humerus is a long bone of the upper limb which extends from the shoulder to the elbow. The proximal aspect of the humerus articulates with the glenoid fossa of the scapula forming the glenohumeral joint. The humerus serves as an attachment for 13 muscles which contribute to the movement of the hand and elbow and therefore the function of the upper limb. For those who don't know, another name for humerus is Adele. The proximal humerus has the greater and lesser tuberosity. Surgical neck which is the junction between the metaphysis and diaphysis. Just below the tuberosities we have the diaphysis. We can't also forget the anatomical neck which is the growth plate. Greater and lesser tuberosities are separated by bicepital groove in which the long head of the biceps run. It's called the intertrabacular sulcus or sulcus intertubicularis. The greater tuberosity is the insertion point of the supraspinatus, teres minor, and the infraspinatus. Lesser tuberosity is the insertion point of the subscapularis. All these muscles are called the rotator cuff muscles. Humeral head, mostly supplied by the acute artery, an ascending branch of our anterior humeral circumflex artery, arising from the bicipital groove after branching from the axillary artery, anterior humeral circumflex artery, anastomosis with the posterior humeral circumflex artery which contributes to the vascularity to the humeral head. Axillary nerve is anterior to the glenohumeral joint, rotator interval region anterior between supraspinatus and the subscapularis tendon, reinforced by joint capsule superior glenohumeral ligament and the coracohumeral ligament. It acts to limit excessive flexion, extension, traction, and the external rotation. Also resists inferior translation in the adducted shoulder, Resist a posterior translation in the flexed or abducted shoulder. This is an external rotated shoulder. Displacing forces that act on the proximal humerus are the greater tuberosity, superiorly and posteriorly by supraspinatus and the external rotators, which are infraspinatus and teres minor. Lesser tuberosity, medial and uh, internal rotation by subscapularis. Humeral shaft, medial by pectoralis major, and proximal fragment, abduction by the deltoid muscle. Proximal humerus fractures account for approximately 4 to 7 percent of all fractures in adults. It is the common fracture of uh, the humerus as well as the second most shoulder fracture after clavicle, common in women than men, and occur often in older adults. This may be attributed to osteoporosis because uh, at this time these women are postmenopausal. Typically, a moderate energy injury, for example, fallen out stretch arm in patients with low bone density. Fractures in young patients are typically due to high energy trauma. For example, motor vehicle accidents. Two-part surgical neck is most common displaced fracture. Region involvement determines treatment and predicts outcome. Like other types of fractures, patients will present with their pain. In this case, at the shoulder around the glenohumeral joint, patients may present with painful wrong and variable swelling and ecchymosis. Also important, assess for neurovascular structures and identify associated injuries. Neurological evaluation must include evolution of the axillary nerve, sensation over the lateral shoulder and the deltoid function. Vascular injuries are uncommon but associated with the elderly patients with the atherosclerotic vessels, thus the axillary artery and vein. Anatomical neck fractures are at highest risk disrupting the blood supply, leading to osteonecrosis. 
Risk increases when medial metaphyseal extension of the head fragment is uh, less than 8 mm and when medial hinge, that's the proximal medial aspect of the shaft fragment, is uh, displaced uh, more than uh, 2 mm. Valgus impaction can allow partial preservation of the articular vascularity via an intact medial capsule. Your doctor will request you to do some imaging tests to help in diagnosis. The initial series for evaluating a patient with suspected humeral fracture is the trauma series, which consists of uh, the anterior posterior abbreviated as uh, AP, a lateral views in the scapular plane and the axillary view. The AP projection will be used to assess uh, fracture displacement of the surgical nail, which is the varus of valgus, and the greater tuberosity, superior displacement, and the lesser tuberosity, medial displacement. Then the joint should be clearly visible. If overlap is seen, suspect dislocation, the lateral view is helpful in assessing flexion and extension of the surgical neck and the posterior displacement of the greater tuberosity fragment. The axillary view helps to assess the tuberosity fragments, which are anterior medial displacement of the lesser tuberosity fragment and posterior displacement of the greater tuberosity fragment. This view is critical in assessing the greater tuberosity fragment as superior displacement may be absent. The infraspinatus can be completely advanced with a posteriorly displaced fragment. Furthermore, dislocation of the head can be defined clearly on this view. CT scan may be used for surgical neck assessment. CT can provide information on articular involvement in head splitting fractures, impression fractures, chronic fracture dislocation and glenoid rim fractures. Tuberosity displacement can also be assessed. MRI may be used to assess soft tissue injuries, for example ligaments, blood vessels and nerves also. May also be used in guiding surgeries. So your doctor will use uh, the imaging results to determine what type of uh, nearest classification you have sustained. Understanding of fracture type gives physical essential information of a uh, prognosis and treatment option. Nearest classification was based on a careful analysis of uh, radiological and uh, surgical findings from 300 proximal humerus fractures. He treated them at a New York Orthopedic Hospital Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center between 1953 and 1967. His classification system was based on observation made much earlier by Codman that all proximal humeral fractures were composed of four major segments, the lesser tuberosity, greater tuberosity, articular surface, and humeral shaft. Near added categories for articular surface fracture and dislocations, as he correctly observed these to be important prognostic factors. He sought to provide a conceptual framework to explain the pathophysiology or pathoanatomy of proximal humeral fractures by accounting for displaced bone fragments, rotator cuff attachments and vascular supply. His second main aim was to catalog the most common injury patterns for research purpose. Let's now look at the classification. The two main components of this classification are number one, number of fracture parts, that's the humeral head, greater tuberosity, lesser tuberosity and humeral shaft. Number two, displacement, that's uh, angulation exceeds 45 degrees of fracture is displaced more than one centimeter. The simplest displaced fracture, which is possible, is a, a two-part fracture. However, a minimum displaced uh, fracture, even one that includes multiple fracture lines, merely constitutes a type 1, one-part fracture. Let's begin with one-part fracture. Fracture lines involves one to four parts. None of the parts are displaced. For instance, less than one centimeter and are less than 45 degrees. These non-displaced or minimally displaced fractures account for 70 to 80 percent of all proximal humeral fractures and are almost always treated conservatively. Two-part fracture. Fracture lines involves two to four parts. One part is displaced, for instance, are greater than one centimeter or greater than 45 degrees. Four possible types of two-part fractures exist. One for each part. First one is surgical neck, which is the most common. Then we have the greater tuberosity one frequently seen in uh, settling of uh, anterior shoulder dislocation. A lower threshold of displacement, usually greater than 5 mm, has been proposed. Then we have the anatomical neck. Then we have the lesser tuberosity, which is uncommon. These fractures account to approximately 20% of proximal humeral fractures. Three-part fracture. Fracture lines involve three to four parts. Two parts are displaced, for instance, uh, greater than 1 cm or uh, 45 degrees. Two three-part fracture patterns are encountered. One, greater tuberosity and shaft are displaced with respect to the lesser tuberosity and the articular surface, which remain together. Most common uh, three-part pattern. Then number two, we have a lesser tuberosity and shaft have been displaced with respect to the greater tuberosity and articular surface, which remain together. These fractures account for approximately 5% of proximal humeral fractures.
Then we have a four part fracture. Fracture lines involves more than four parts. These parts are displaced, for instance, are greater than one centimeter or greater than 45 degrees with respect to the fourth. These fractures are uncommon, less than 1% of approximate humeral fractures. This pattern has poor and operative results, and as the articular surface is no longer attached to any parts of the humerus which are attached to the soft tissue, this pattern has a high incidence of osteoporosis. They require an operative management. Valgus impacted four-part fracture. This type of four-part fracture is uh, considered its own category and has a uh, different prognosis than typical four-part fractures. Now we have looked at the classification which will now help us decide the management. So the personality of the fracture, for example bone quality, fracture orientation, committing soft tissue injuries, the personality of the patient, for example compliance, realistic attitude, mental status, and the personality of the surgeons, for example surgical experience, technical familiarity, available resources, all have a tremendous effect on specific treatment indications. Thank you.